He was shot. Welcome back to My View TV, the people's platform, the home of undiluted news, reviews, updates, and your daily dose of entertainment. Don't forget to hit the notification bell. Leave us a comment, like, share, and subscribe. I don't bring nobody forward in your future for me. Everything where you see up my natural talent. Let me tell you something. You see, when you know what to please the audience with, it's simple me. What go on, people? Hope everybody in okay. Hope everybody in all right. So, I have a lot of things coming up in this newscast. Yes, 16 year old, so watch another man be done with school. Scamming me, I pick up full time. I'm a mother, give me your blessing. We saw my career, what go on, right there. So, look, I start the news right to BCIC first. Me know, so everybody know this a BCIC thief, yeah. Me go tell you what she name. Former employee of BCIC, Crystal Burke, has pled guilty to embezzlement more than 400000 from the company. She is to return to the Kingston and St. Andrew Parish Court on May 19th for sentencing. The company disclosed in 2019 that Burke was directly collecting a customer insurance premium. The payments were not reflecting on the customer's insurance policy and as a result, his policy was cancelled. BCIC became aware of embezzlement when the customer came to the office to report an accident involving one of his motorcycles. The customer informed from BCIC that he had transferred money to Burke's account to pay for his insurance premium. Come in like she not give him a look at this code, but him never know say he never have up on the policy in paper. Take your wallet money and put it in her pocket. Based on the customer explanation and the receipt he presented, BCIC had to honor his claim and he received 94000 as a compensation for the accident. BCIC suffered a loss of $440,073.66 for the unpaid premium. Burke pled guilty to charges of embezzlement in February and has since compensated BCIC. I can move on in the news because she had thief. Remember me tell me I follow this on news of paper? Yes, I know me have the update can't give you. Detective Sergeant Tamika Taylor bail was extended when she appeared in court on Thursday on charges of possession of and dealing ganja. The police woman who is assigned to the Kingston Central Police Division by the Narcotics Police in February she is to return to the St. Thomas Parish Court on May 13. Her common law husband, Holland, a big family business people. Ryan Harris is before the court on multiple charge after the narcotics police raid and destroy a ganja field in Dumfries, St. Thomas on February 18, 2021. The court was told that the case files are incomplete. Yes, people. Coming like it's a big family business that I go on with. So it's like coming up and out on the St. Thomas side. Police have a boy out there one of a look for. Yes, I see this a boy. Need to get slapped by enemies necessary and not only him or two of them. Let me tell you the first one name. Nesta Bigger Morris. Everybody know him as bigger crime. It's MCM1. Wanted for shooting with intent on members of the Jamaica Constabulary Force. That the boy the people bleach out now still you understand. And the people them see my walk up every single day. Hold on a bit, you know, Ryan Berger Brown, see him the him. Yes, man, this ugly looking fellow. Him see him on, you see? Him here, you know, he's pretty much look. Him here, them twist, 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 so, 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 all over the place. Yeah, man, him face lean to wanted for murder. Anybody see them? Just call the police. And police, make me tell you this. Make sure you clean out in the cause more and don't listen. Yes. Yes, when the people them call and say, them see them a criminal boy, yeah. Slap a business the people them are dealing with. The people them now are here say, when they carry them in for going to have taxpayers money. No, 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 no. Only no bother with that. That not play. You understand? That not play in a ball game. Slap a business the people them are talking about. Watch it now, people. I'm going down for the biggest get in Jamaica right over Portmore. Them drop on curfew over there and two that the curfew are lifted. Yes, but the police them, they tell me a little thing. Say them have some little boy over there with them. Now a picture of them. And them want them to get slapped with too. So, let me get police them tell you now. Who them a look for a Portmore and people who not have them pictures. So, send in them picture so the police them can have it. They put it out so people can know who them be. So, when them see them, they know see a same operation. Underground operation are going for them. There has been some heightened tension in the Waterford area since the murder of uh, Kamara Davis, O.C. Dragon, on Saturday evening. And... Uh, Another murder which was committed on Wednesday, April 13, in the same area. Now, based on what is going on in that space, we have taken the decision to halt the current crime trends 
and we will carry out some operational activities. So uh, 48 hours curfew was implemented. Now in the Waterford era, there are some persons of interest that we would like to speak to. One known as Malidon, another person known as Yutan Davis, otherwise known as Cote, uh, a gentleman known as Donovan Stewart, is also known as Shaky, and one Damian Stewart, O.C. Benny. We are asking these persons to turn themselves over to the Portmore CIB, and uh, they will be questioned. So that a wagwan for wagwan right over the ghetto. Here wagwan now people, can't you always have something to say? The House of Representatives has approved an extension of all the seven zone of sleeping authorization for another 60 days. The zone were set to extend in a few days. Hold on there now people, this is our best case. In can't fool everybody, but we, in requesting the extension, Kanjo said the zones are having a positive impact on the communities. Him no wrong, no lie tell. Me I be honest with you know. Remember said him not tell them criminal friend them say you wanna do. Take a crime and violence next door. Leave out of this parish, go in one next parish. And you see, when we decide to come on a parish there, we are going to tell you, no, so you no go back home. That is exactly what I go on my people. Remember, you know, my talk as it is and as it might be. Since the respective periods of declarations, as of the 11th of April 2022, Parade Gardens and Savannah Lamar have recorded no murders or shootings. Mount Salem has recorded a 64% reduction in murders and a 68% percent reduction in shootings. Denham Town has recorded a reduction of 26% in murders and 44% in shootings. Greenwich Town has recorded a reduction of 22% in murders and 27% in shooting. August Town has recorded a 53% reduction in murders and a 71% reduction in shootings. And Norwood has recorded an 83% reduction in murders and a 100% reduction in shootings. People may not see exactly where I go on. The criminal them go next door go and create mayhem and destruction. I'm coming like them not see it, you know. You know, see them not see it. But like I tell you what I see. I know see them see one tell them for go over there, you know. But anyway, I can move on to the news. They scammer them out of them, out in them numbers. Yes, people, and I can tell you this. Them in the school. A lot of them are in, a matter of fact, them stop go school and pick up scamming full time. And them parents agree with them, and so that's why I hear me come and me say, slap well, so my parents, them too. I'm not gonna stop saying that. Enough of them supposed to get slap well. Like me always say, I'm not come out if you make up no story. So keep back and relax and listen exactly what I'm going now. As the authorities try to curb violence in schools, they have another problem on their hands. Several students are now ditching formal education for lottery scamming. We've gotten permission to speak with a student who's not been at school since the pandemic. Uh, he's decided that he does not want us in his presence, so we're gonna call him on the phone. To mask his identity, we'll call him Mark Brown. At 16 years old, Mark is the breadwinner for his family. The Westmoreland teen who attended high school up to November 2021 told me he started scamming people after finding out he was not recommended to sit CSEC exams. He missed numerous classes due to connectivity issues when the pandemic hit and since then life was not the same. Instead of seeking a traditional job or seek placement at another institution, he turned to lottery scamming. <laughs> Of note is that his mother is aware and also benefits from the proceeds of the scam. Mark represents a growing number of school-aged children who've taken an interest in illegal activities since the COVID-19 pandemic. This was Police Commissioner Major General Anthony Anderson at a media briefing recently. Perhaps because of the time they had available to them, got involved in things they shouldn't have. Uh, Lottery scamming being one. Under Section 3 of the Fraudulent Transactions Act, anyone found guilty of such an offense may be fined or imprisoned for up to 20 years. Despite the harsh penalty, some school-aged children aren't phased. Do you agree yeah. that what you're doing is wrong? One million times agree to that wrong. Trust me, no one say wrong, you know. But sometimes it's can't be better. You to get a better understanding as to how and why students take this route, we sought the expertise of Christopher Charles, Professor of Political and Social Science at the University of the West Indies. These youngsters in lottery scams are supported by their parents. They're actually in a criminal family. They were socialized into criminality. And I wouldn't be surprised if some, someone in the family, either both parents are one, or an uncle or a cousin, or a family friend who is close, is into criminal activity. But here's what the team told me when pressed about his wrongdoings. Uh, we don't want to be anything else. All of our life. I'm going to say, no man. Every, every, every joy we feel, you know, people ball, you know. Yeah. And we don't want that to be over a few family and a few generations. The family continues to make demands for money, right? 
Although it's coming from a legal activity. So, so when that happens, the youngster might very well be, become a lifelong scammer. For years, there have been discussions about what's being done and what needs to be done to steer students away from a life of crime. Mr. Charles says emphasis must be placed on addressing the social ills within the society. Those youngsters, if they were socialized properly, with, 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 with proper parental support and guidance, they would not be into scamming. Because other children are going through the same stressors, the same challenges and difficulties from the pandemic. And they are working, but they have decided not to go into scamming. So it's, it is a choice.